You're the first test subject for an experimental super soldier serum. You are told the truth only after you transform into something not quite human anymore. I open my eyes. Everything was not, but suddenly is. I search my surroundings to understand. Objects are scattered around me within a space. I am an object as well? No, I am me. More than an object. My eyes focus in on my form. I feel my body. It's familiar like I've always known it, yet it's the first time I've seen or felt it. Sweat drips down my arms as I involuntarily inhale until my chest is full. I can smell my own odor. It's strong but calming. I've been in this space for some time. The air tastes metallic. Strange that I know the taste of metal to even compare. I lick my lips and feel a sharp pain and the taste of copper. I cannot help but lick again only to feel the pain subside and the wound close. The ringing subsides and only in its absence do I know it was there. Objects around me move and now it's clear they're making sound, but the patterns are ones I can recognize. I make out the phrase, Captain, can you hear me? Captain, is my name Captain? That does not feel like my name. I look to the one speaking before another quickly interrupts. He shouldn't know his name, Clive. The first man's name is Clive. He is a man. I look to my body. He is a man like me. He knows his name. Why shouldn't I know my name, I must ask. Why shouldn't I know my name, Clive? There is a silence as loud as it is quiet. The other man speaks even though I spoke to Clive. It's not that you shouldn't, it's that you wouldn't. Do you know your name? Do you know yours? Conversing feels natural, but my throat feels dry. The other man smiles and says, Tara, my name is Tara. This is not a man. Tara is a woman. Hello, Tara and Clive. Is my name Captain? I believe this is not my name, but Tara and Clive may know better. Clive is looking to Tara for a response. She opens her mouth to speak, but there is a pause. It's more of a title. Then what is my name? I feel as though I have just been born. I long for an identity. Tara motions for Clive to leave as she sits down in front of me to loosen my restraints. Why was I restrained? I don't know your name. I know the name that once lived in your body, but that is not you. Tara, I do not understand. Am I prisoner? As my wrists are freed, I feel a sense of relief, though I still feel confined. Tara passes me a glass of water. The man who walked into this room and lay on this table once controlled your body. He was a captain that volunteered for a procedure that would grant his body extraordinary abilities. Extraordinary? To what end? What differentiates my current being from what he was? Clive returns with a box, a clipboard, and food on a plate. The captain wished to be more than he was. We knew how to make that a reality. Did you know he would not be me? Tara hands me a sandwich and I take a bite. She unloads equipment from the box and begins to remove syringes from my arms. Yes, we did. Did the captain know he would not be me? I can feel her pause in her actions before placing a brace on both my wrists. They're heavy, but seem to be relaying information to her monitor. The world is becoming clearer. Tara takes out her clipboard and begins taking notes. No, he did not. In giving me life, you have taken his away? I feel something within. This is guilt. I feel as though I have stolen from another man. Tara is avoiding eye contact as she writes. We promised him his body would be capable of performing remarkable things. We did not lie. You did not lie, but you did not tell the truth. I feel angry and dismissed. I clench at the sides of my bed. Tara presses a button and my arms are pulled by the braces back to a resting position. She is standing now, looking at me once more, but a tear falls down her face. We didn't have a choice, Captain. I do not like this. Take these off. I hardly noticed the restraints before they were released, but now that I've experienced that freedom, how can I accept this? Tara points to the sides of my bed where I clenched. Nothing but a hole the shape of my hand is left, and I realize I'm holding the pieces still in my palms. I'm sorry, it's a precaution. When your heart rate settles, it will automatically release. We don't yet know the extent of your abilities, and we need to be sure you will not pose a threat to us or our facility. That makes sense. I calm myself, and as she said, the braces released their pull. I considered trying to pry them off, but I do not wish to be a threat. Tara looks on in wonder, and perhaps fear. I don't think she expected that response. I don't want this to be difficult. I believe you. 
I don't know why, but I have a gut feeling Tara can be trusted. There's a pause before Tara sits back down. What can I call you? I still need time to think. For now, call me Captain.